What is matter and how is it going to change how we do home automation? Well, that's kind of what I'm looking at in this video. So um, stay tuned. Okay, so first, before I go into what matter is, let's just well, sort of examine where we are today. So today with home automation is a bit of a mess. Well, we, we have to admit that. So um, you might buy, say, a doorbell and it says work with Alexa or works with Google Home Assistant or whatever it might be. Um, you don't actually quite know how you're going to integrate it. And I say you, I mean the average consumer. It's sort of like, well, it'll probably work with my phone. Do I use Siri or is it through an app? Like it's just, it's confusing. And none of it seems to work together. So you have like Samsung wants you to buy all their Samsung stuff so you can buy, you know, use Samsung together. Philips has their lights that all go through their Hue hub bridge thing. You know, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, and all of these devices, and there are many, don't really work together. Maybe they do. And that's kind of why we have Home Assistant, right? It's the glue between all of it. So that's sort of... It's a mishmash of standards that just sort of sits next to each other and maybe sort of fit and work together. That's kind of where we're at today. And the industry, of course, has noticed this, thank God. Um, so we, uh, we're now at a point where we need something to change in order for this to not become even worse and even harder to manage and even more nerdy, such as like, you know, tools like Home Assistant. So that's kind of where we're at today. So that brings me to matter, um, and it is just spelled M-A-T-T-E-R, matter. It's a standard, it's made up by what's called the Connectivity Standards Alliance, CSA, which is a company that's made up by 550 industry companies that all do IoT and home automation stuff. And they've all come together and say, we need to fix this, and matter is the, their answer to this. So matter is a, it's a language, essentially, and all of these companies have decided that the matter language is what they're going to all speak. All their devices are going to talk together using the matter language. So it's a way of devices communicating with each other, even if they're not made by the same companies. Um, now, the first version came out this week, version 1.0, and it's taken about three years, three and a half years since it was announced to actually be a thing. Um, so this means that the, the standard has been announced and published, uh, the documentation for version 1.0. And this is a, a standard that the companies are then going to implement, right? So Apple will support Matter devices and Google will support Matter devices and Alexa will support or, or Amazon will support Matter devices. Um, and they will all have their Matter controllers essentially. So. Um, how this might work is that you have, say, a Google Nest Hub, which I have quite a few of, and that will um, let you control Matter devices, even if they're not made by Google. So you can kind of do that today as well. You know, you have your Google Home Assistant, or not Google Home Assistant, what's called Google Hub, and your Google Home, and that can control things that are integrated with the Google Home platform. So, for example, my Tuya lights work with Google, or my I can see my vacuum cleaner in Google Home. But it's not everything, and it's up to the companies to integrate with the Google standard, right? And it's not sustainable, because suddenly you'll have Apple will have their standard, and Google will have their standard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now, Google's going to say, hey, well, these Nest hubs, or Apple's going to say, hey, our HomeKit stuff, it's going to support Matter. So that means that you have a, say, a, an Apple HomeKit device that will then be able to um, manage that matter device no matter what company it's come from. And that's kind of cool, right? You have a simple, straightforward language that all these devices can talk. At least that's the idea. So the first version of matter that's come out is just doing really simple stuff. So it'd be like, hey, I'm a light bulb, I can turn on and off. That's it. Right? There's not going to be a support necessarily for, say, an example I saw was if uh, Philips Hue decides to have a music feature that plays Bonanza and the lights flashes in tune with that music, 
then that isn't going to be supported by Matter so that your HomeKit thing can then control that. That also means that obviously all these devices are still going to have their own bespoke language or their bespoke features that aren't supported by Matter, at least not version one. But all the simple stuff, um, such as light bulbs, apparently, I'm not exactly sure how many different simple things are going to be supported, means that you can, you can use them with Matter and, and through the Matter network. So Matter is like a seal of approval. It's like a stamp going, yep, I speak this particular language and I, have, I can support these particular features in a generic way, the Matter way. That's the idea, so that other devices on, and, and hubs and controllers can see those and interact with them accordingly. So that's where, that's where we've been promised. Okay, so in terms of technology, so I said that the, the matter is like a language, and it is. It, it's not depending on what uh, communications uh, channel you're using. It's not depending on uh, any sort of hardware features necessarily. It is just a software implementation of a language protocol. So that means that, uh, well, first off, Matter is going to be working with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in version 1, as far as I can understand it. But down the track, it doesn't mean that you can't use your Zigbee devices and your Z-Wave devices and everything else. We'll also be able to support Matter. It doesn't matter what the communication layer is. Matter is just a protocol that goes across it. So that's kind of neat. It also means that you won't have necessarily to buy new devices that support Matter. If... <laughs> If, as big if, the manufacturer updates the device with a firmware update, they can make it support matter as well, which is kind of neat. Now, is that going to happen? I don't know. I hope that at least the larger um, manufacturers, such as, you know, Apple, Google, Amazon, Samsung, Philips, uh, Xiaomi, um, whatever else, like, <laughs> there's many, but I hope that at least they will update it. But as I said, there are 550 companies that have said, yes, we are in this matter um, sort of world together and we're going to support it. Whether they're going to retroactively support it, I'm not sure, but I very much hope so if this has, you know, want to get traction fast at least. Um, so that's the technology of it. It's not actually a hardware thing, it's a software thing, but it's taken that long to, to come to terms with what that means. Okay, so there's kind of two questions that I want to, I want answers to. I don't know if I can answer them right now, but one is, is this going to really help me in the short term? So what I mean is, for example, I have a, um, a motion sensor from Ikea, and when that's triggered, I have an automation in Home Assistant that then turns on the light for my Shelly Wi-Fi relay. Is that going to get easier with Matter? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, can't, figure, I can't quite figure that out, because what does it go through? So right now, the Shelly doesn't have a hub. It's a Wi-Fi thing that goes through an API. And the motion sensor goes through my Zigbee gateway. So I know right now Matter doesn't support Zigbee right now, but when it does, is that then going to make me be able to turn on my light? That means the Shelly has to then also support Matter. And yeah, it's just, it's really... My head kind of hurts when I think about the scenarios that they have to, re to, to support. But it must, at some point, be possible. For example, uh, the, the, the matter example that they keep using is like, well, if you have, say, your Philips Hue light and you have your, um, you know, your Wi-Fi motion sensor, for example, Bluetooth motion sensor is probably a better example, then those two will just talk to each other through the Philips hub or through Google, like you need to have something that controls the two together, then we're not going to get around that, unless you want connections through between everything. Those are the things, that I can't quite get my head around that, um, how that's going to work in practice. I understand that the devices are going to use matter to talk to each other, but are they going to talk directly? I don't think so, because a Bluetooth device can't talk to a Wi-Fi device, can it, unless it goes through a hub? Ha! Those are the questions I'm not quite sure about. I'm sure they'll figure it out. I'm sure versions in the future will support these scenarios, but right now I'm not so sure. And then the second question, the biggest one I think is, for me, is this going to make Home Assistant obsolete? Because Home Assistant is that glue. 
The reason I started using Home Assistant was that I didn't want 16 different apps to use on my phone, and I wanted to automate things from different companies together, and that's kind of what Meta is supposed to do, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't think Home Assistant's going anywhere, because Home Assistant is so generic and it's so vast in the way, ways of integrations that we're going to continue to see things um, being supported in Home Assistant that Meta just can't do. For example, um, if it's uh, overcast from my weather, you're based on a weather forecast, turn on my outdoor sprinklers. I don't see how that's going to work in Meta because the weather forecast isn't Meta related. Unless the hub you have that supports Meta also has a weather input, but then you might as well use Home Assistant. So that, I don't think Home Assistant's going anywhere. I think there's going to be an, an added bonus to Home Assistant, and Home Assistant's going to support Meta. I have no, no doubt about that. It probably makes it easier. So I think the future is bright. I really, really like that Meta is here. I think it's a great step in the right direction to try and standardize all this communication between all these devices because, wow, we just keep adding more and more and more, right? Constantly more home automation. It's a rabbit hole. So I think Matter is going to help that, no question. Um, and I think we'll see much more refinement coming. Obviously, this is version one. Um, but I can't wait to get my hands on some actual Matter devices, whether it's existing ones I have that are being updated or I have to go and get a couple of new ones. I want to play with it and see, get my head around all these scenarios. How does this work? So if you have anything else to add, I'm sure you do, about the Matter sort of language, protocol, universe, announced, been announced, please put them in the comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this Matter universe and how that will um, improve our home automation journey in the future. And uh, please subscribe if you like the content. Um, I like my subscribers. I give them free cake every Tuesday, in case you didn't know. So, yeah, Matter is here. Matter is awesome. I'm just not quite sure I understand exactly how it works just yet. So, please help me out. Comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.